아, 그거 있죠? 방, 이놈 좀 랩, 까, 또, 까, 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 Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to clarify that the typewritten version of Pol Pot and Q Sampon is D367.14. So we have this typewritten version, and then we have the direct photocopy of the published work. Mr. Header, can I ask this? The document that we've been working off, which is the typewritten version, was that something that you produced or was produced at the university, or do you know nothing about this typewritten version that we're working off? I, I, I don't know anything about the version of which you're working. I only know that the ragged, dark photocopy of the original is published in Australia. This must have been retyped by somebody in the pagination is, I suppose, different because this version, the retyped version, has the cover as page one, whereas in the original published version, the cover page has no one number different from two. Thank you. Um, I was uh, asking a question. Which was about um, in the book he was saying in an interview with the author on the 4th of August 1980, he alleged that Khmer agents who were the Vietnamese infiltrated into the Central Committee didn't reach half of its membership. In the Standing Committee, it was almost half. He confirmed that that was what was written in the book. What I would like to do, please, is to take you to file three, tab six. And this is now document number E3 slash which is the transcript of the questions and answers in the interview that you had with Q Sampon on the 4th of August 1980. Can you confirm that it's document number one? Yes. I'd like you to go to page 19 of that document, English RN 0042-4014. Khmer 0043-4214. Sorry, that is the French. And Khmer. Zero zero three eight five four one zero through one one. And you had been speaking, and Q Sampon had been answering about the Khmer, the Vietnamese agents, and talking about them secretly destroying and distorting the line. And that led to this question from you to Q Sampong. In 1975, what percentage of them were in the senior ranks of the party, in the Central Committee or in the Standing Committee? Answer, there were many. Question, half. Answer, Less than half in the Central Committee, but nearly half in the Standing Committee. Question from you. Nearly half. Who were they? Answer. I don't want to mention about this issue here, and it's not the right time for us to discuss conclusively about our experiences, because we are busy with the war, with fighting to defeat the Yuan. We will deal with this issue gradually. 
Vietnam Can you confirm that that's an accurate record of what was said at this stage of your interview with Q Son Pong? Yes, I mean, the, obviously the translation is slightly different, but the sense, I think, is the same. I'm moving back to the document which is in fact D366. Point one, point one four for Mr. Uh, Millennium Friend, Mr. Coppe, probably best that I refer to some footnotes. notes. There's reference to footnotes uh, 37, 39, 40. I'm going to try and uh, summarize the general theme, uh, but make specific reference to material before footnote 37. And you are talking generally about Q Sampon and Gwong and Fung. And you state this, for your benefit, Mr. Hedda, page 11 of the item. Formally speaking, the destruction of Grunk and Funk proceeded in three steps. First came the adoption of a new constitution to replace the Funk political program dating to 1970. Second came the holding of what purported to be elections to a national assembly to replace the Funk-sponsored congresses over which Q. Sompong had been presiding as the supposed popular policy-making body of the revolutionary movement. Third came the establishment of a new government and other state bodies to replace Grunk itself. I want to deal in the next part with elections. And can I ask you please to turn within the same file to tab two? This is document number E3 slash 390. It is the transcript of your interview with Matt Lee. We've already referred to it in court this morning. Can I please take us to its page 28 of the document. The English ERN is 0043687373. I don't have the Khmer, but I'm going to ask my colleague to see if she can help pulling it up. Well, can I just check for one moment? Mr. Header and for everyone, it's available in Khmer, and it will come up on the screens in Khmer. For our purposes, Mr. Header, page 28, about a third of the way down the page after figures 250, 150, there is a sentence that begins, but the method of my election. Do you have that, please? Yes. So this is Matt Lee speaking. But the method of my election, let me tell you, each center had only one ballot. For instance, me, Matt Lee. So they called in the people to vote, saying that if they were dissatisfied to erase it. Let me tell you. No one aside from the cadres had a big ballpoint pen in their pocket in that era. No one. Ask the brothers that were evacuated from Phnom Penh.
thông chính luôn đầm nam thắt về nhá xong tiếp chồng mà tầm nuôi trong còi mà lúc xài chất phẩm đóng tiền của phù hợp mình miền bánh hạ bọc rè phía xa bà răng mình miền mình miền cao bọc rè chỉ phía xa bà răng Mr. Hedder, the portion we're reading begins with the words, but the method of my election. Do you have that on your page? Yes. But the method of my election, let me tell you, each centre had only one ballot. For instance, me, Matt Lee. So they called in the people to vote, saying that if they were dissatisfied to erase it, let me tell you, no one aside from the cadres had a big ballpoint pen in their pocket in that era. No one ask the brothers that were evacuated from Phnom Penh. If they had one, they hid it because they were afraid it would be known that they were literate. All near-sighted people took off their eyeglasses. They were afraid of being called intellectuals and being taken away and killed. They said that intellectuals still had imperialist influence. In particular, in that election, if any of the people dared to strike out the name, they were standing and watching. And since there were no photographs on the ballot, and it just said Matt Lee, they brought a stool for me to sit on, and they had the people vote. They just looked at my face, put in their ballot, and turned around. No one dared strike out my name. Can you confirm that that was what you were told by Matt Lee in this interview? Yes. But we're moving now to the assembly, and Matt Lee continues. So after the election on the 11th of May, they called me to the meeting and we left from the district. I was in the meeting on the 12th. On the 13th, I returned home. They instructed that the assembly belonged to the party and the work had to be given to the party to do. But our assembly required by law and custom so that the international world would know that we had laws and customs and a proper assembly like they did. That's what they told me. But the content of the meeting, I'm not talking about organising the ministers or the council of ministers or council of states. I'm talking about the organisation of the assembly. The assembly was 250 persons. They had a standing committee of 10. Among those 10 was the chairman, Nguyen Chia. There were two deputy chairmen, and other than that, they were all members. I was a member of the standing committee of the assembly. I was member number eight. So what did we discuss in that meeting? Nothing. They just read it out and we raised our hands. For example, they read out the organisation of the standing committee. One, two, who was the chairman, who the deputies were, and we clapped our hands. And the constitution, a moment, that constitution, just a moment. They wrote that constitution very well. For example, they wrote that the people had the right to have or not have religious faith, but reactionary religions were absolutely forbidden. That's what they wrote. But in fact, in that meeting of the assembly, they eliminated all religion. 
He then says a little bit further down, their mandarins, the council of ministers, had Pol Pot as prime minister, and others were in there. Hu Nim was minister of propaganda and culture, and they had a court. They assigned Q Song Pong as chairman of the state presidium, and Sao Pim, my leader, was first deputy chairman. Nguyen Ross was in what they called the West. Is that right? You then said question the Northwest, replied Northwest. He was second deputy chairman, and they killed both. That's why I saw no one was present. It was like when we voted, we just raised our hands in acceptance. So then, the assembly meeting lasts just two hours, Mr. Inaudible, national leadership level, Brother Chia Sim, it began at 7.30 and ended at 9.30. So I wore a suit with them for two hours, a suit and a necktie, and we left. They had us take off the suits and neckties at the foreign ministry, give them back, and put on black clothes to go back home. But who did they disseminate it? On the 11th, there was not yet any meeting. The meeting was on the morning of the 12th. On the 13th, we went back home. At dawn on the 14th, they announced on the radio that the assembly had for three days busily discussed in detail the laws and customs and had organized the ministers. Is that an accurate recording of what Matt Lee told you in this interview? Yes. Mr. Hedder, in terms of direct Some factual look, information from Hedder direct factual sources, have you obtained any other factual information about the conduct of these elections? You used the word purported in the report, but can you offer any other factual information as to the spread of the elections, where they were held, how frequently? Can you assist? On this point, to my recollection, not a lot, it's not something I asked about very much. Um, I think it's on page 12 of your My Document, the material leading to footnote 41 from the learning friend, Mr. Cocker. English ERN 0008777766 Khmer 0071138 French 0072275 Ten days after the balloting, there was a central committee document outlining the party's leadership decisions about a number of important issues. These included policy on executions and vis-a-vis -vis the destruction of Grunk and Funk. And there you refer a document that we're all familiar with, a decision of the Central Committee dated the 30th of March 1976. Footnote 41 uh, states that this document, the one you were referring to, I think, this document has been translated in extenso by Ben Kiernan and appears in the collection Pol Pot Plans for the Future. You then add at the end, in some places, my translation of the passages quoted here are slightly different from his. The original Khmer text was kindly provided to me by David Chandler. Can I ask just in terms of the translations of this document, were there any material differences on the question 
question of the policy on executions and vis-à-vis -vis the destruction of Grunk and Funk. I think uh, there are some, there's a problem which often arises in the translation of Khmer due to the frequent lack of clear specification of the difference between singular and plural. Sometimes it's not clear whether we're talking about an office or about offices. Um, there's also sometimes a problem in the way in which the modifiers follow nouns. So you can't tell whether if, if standing follows two mentions of committee, whether it means standing committees in both of the two cases or only in one of the two cases. And that can only be determined if it can be determined from context and from what one knows of the rest of the situation. Sometimes there's no solution to that problem. You just have to guess. Now, if we can stay on the same page, which you do, then explain the document certainly in terms of, um, I hope, your, your Khmer. And I quote, the, the document began by clarifying policy with regard to the right to decide on exterminations within and outside the ranks of the party. It declared that there should be parameters within which the work of implementing our revolutionary dictatorship, in other words, execution, is carried out. It then delineated which party or other body had the authority to order an execution in various contexts. For example, it pronounced that for those appended to the offices of the centre, i.e. the central committee, the centre office committee is to make the decision. It seems that those appended to the offices of the centre in at least some instances, covered Communist Party cadre who worked in government ministries, including those who were ministers, but not themselves of central committee rank. Is that now a fair summary adopting your command from reading the document? Uh, yes, but that very problem that I flagged uh, arises in this context. So, um, in, in, in the, where, it, where, where it says, it pronounced that, quote, for those appended to the offices of the center, it might be singular office, and the center office committee is to make the decision. Conversely, that, one could, that could be the center office committee. So it's ambiguous or unclear, I think, on the face of it. With, with, in, the, with the, in the absence of context or other clarifying information, whether those things should be singular or plural. At the bottom of our page, 12, which follows on from footnote 43, you make reference to Suvasi, and then turning over our page onto page 13, which becomes English 0087777, Khmer 0071138, and French 0072207, still on doing, you say. Communist Party pseudonym was Duan. Duan was like Q Sampon and intellectual, but not a well known one, nor one who had a record of working at a higher level with the intellectual and political elite of the Sihanouk era. 
his post as chairman of office 870 was already a powerful one because its previously defined duty was quote, to keep track of the implementation, quote, of the Standing Committee's policy decisions. And that references back to the 9th of October 1975 meeting, which is our E3 stroke 182. And so when you're talking about um, the previously defined duty, do I have it right you're talking to what was previously defined in the minutes of an earlier meeting? Yes, that's, that's correct. In terms of factual information from factual sources, not opinion, not speculation, other than S21 confessions, have you seen factual documents that provide information on the workings of Office 870? I think the answer is yes, but I, if I was going to deal with that, I would really like to look at the individual documents again, but I think there are other mentions of it, uh, but because this is such a contentious and crucial issue. And because there's so much ambiguity surrounding the terminology, I, I, I don't, even on, on factual grounds, without the documentation in front of me, I'm a little bit reluctant to, to come. Okay, thank you. Um, page 14 for us, which will be following on shortly after footnote 49. English ERN 00087778, Khmer 00711389, and French 00722077, the bottom of our page 14. As of October 1975, when Q Sompong was still its deputy premier, the Grunk cabinet comprised 20 cabinet level figures. Of these, nine were fellow intellectuals or elite political figures with whom he had worked in pre revolutionary Phnom Penh but were either not members of the Communist Party, held significantly lower ranks in it than him, or had no obvious direct connection to party leaders in the standing committee. You then discuss other figures, and about a third of the way down the page, you state in effect that uh, out of his, that's Q Sompon's 16 former Grunk and Funk colleagues, had eventually become executed in, in terms 9 out of 16. Uh, it, is that correct? Um, from, I think the answer is yes, I mean, I'm trying to read through and do the, the counting, but yes. We end up with a nine at footnote 50 being all set out. Can you confirm that the nine are set out at footnote 50? The, the, yes, the nine names are specified in the I'd like to move quite some pages now to page 19 of ours. This is text in relation to footnote 66. The English ERN 00087783. Khmer 0071139. 
and by French from by 0072 Talk about um, Democratic Campuchia's official broadcast, radio broadcast, a Pol Pot speech, which publicly revealed for the first time both the existence of the Communist Party and his leadership of it. The speech, given on the 27th of September 1977, contained a detailed exposition of Pol Pot's views on the entire history of the Communist movement uh, in Cambodia and its successes and failures. It seemed to signal publicly the special trust Pol Pot had in the two men who had been helping him in the purge process begun earlier in the year, Nguyen Chia and Q Sompong. They were the only two party leaders who Pol Pot found the opportunity to mention favourably. Uh, Pol Pot described Q Sompong as a distinguished intellectual and paid him the accolade of mentioning how he had suffered arrest and detention because of his political activities. And again, that's a document we're aware of, E3-144. My question is, in terms of factual sources of factual information, are there any other instances factually of Pol Pot identifying others for particular and similar praise? Not, not to my recollection, no. I want to move on, please, to page 25 in our paper. This references footnote 74 from the learned friend Mr. Coppe, the English ERN 0087789. The Khmer is 0071148 and French 0072287. I ask the question, lest there are any pending objections, on the basis that this is a question going to Q Sompong's capacity for leadership, a theme which is on a judgment one, asked questions a few weeks ago, and upon which I asked supplemental questions arising from his questions in terms of Q Sompong's position post-1969. At the bottom of our page 25, you state, or it's stated in the book, in December 1979, 11 months after the power of the Communist Party of Cambodia disintegrated in the face of a Vietnamese military offensive, the government of Democratic Cambodia was reshuffled. Pol Pot stepped down and was replaced as Prime Minister by Q Songpong. Footnote 74 references Democratic Kampuchea biographies of the members of the government of Democratic Kampuchea and in brackets it then says typescript document in the author's possession. So your possession. Can you please explain how you came to be in possession of this typescript type document? Um, yes, it was passed on to me by one or more journalists by the Khmer Rouge for lack of a specific term. Um, so the, it's a document in English that they distributed to journalists at that time and journalists passed on to me. And I suspect it was somebody with Jim Durand. I uh, can't be absolutely sure of that. It might have been somebody else. 
Thank you. Our page, the next page, which is 26, reference in footnote 77, English ERN 0008770, Khmer 0071410, French 0072288. In addition to assuming the post of Prime Minister, Kyusampon also became the Provisional Chairman of the Patriotic and Democratic Front of the Great National Union of Kampuchea. Again, you reference from Democratic Kampuchea, this document is called Composition of the Government of Democratic Kampuchea. And again, typescript document in the possession of the author is the chain of translation of the document similar to the document we just dealt with in the previous Uh, yes, again, I think the original is in, is in English, and the document came to me via journalists who received it directly from, from, from them, from the Khmer Rouge. I'd like to move again on a number of pages to page 28 on our version. If it helps, um, in terms of footnotes, it is text in relation to page 28. material between footnotes 83, 84 and onwards, but you're talking about your 1980 interview with you, and to introduce the analysis, you say <coughs> a third of the way down page 28 on our version. It's perhaps useful to quote at length from remarks he, that's Q. Sompon, made to the author in August 1980 and from a document issued under his authority in July 1987. And I'm, going, I'm not going to deal with comments about starvation. I want to start with comments about another matter. So halfway down the page, there's a sentence starting with regard to executions. And the sentence reads, with regard to executions, he, that's Q. Sampon, similarly asserted that the concrete reality is there were no such killings as a result of a systematic policy or line to kill, per se. Talk like this is untrue in concrete terms. He then, though, as you say a little later on, about four sentences afterwards, thus after asking himself rhetorically and euphemistically whether there had been things that adversely affected the lives of the people, he replied, there were indeed, although not on the scale of a massacre. He quickly added that the existence of such killings should be clarified they existed as a result of the Vietnamese agents, Khmer agents, who the Vietnamese infiltrated into the ranks of our state power, where they furthermore had quite important roles. Evidently, uh, you, you say referring to Sao Pim, Rus Nim, and Chu Chet, as people, some of them were in charge of the zones. You then state this, quoting from the interview, but by 1977 to 1978, we had basically sorted them out and put proper order into the situation inside the country. Now, does that reflect both what's written on this page of the book and also what Q. Sompon told you in the interview that you had with him? I'm having a little bit of trouble sorting out what which uh, may have what might have come uh, from which of those two sources. Uh, um, so the footnote is where 
I think it might be easier if I take you to the actual interview. So, um, tab 6, under your existing file, page 18. I'm now in the actual interview, which is E3-203. This is English 0042-4013. French 0043-4232. Khmer 0038-5. Now that is the transcription of the actual interview. I hope it helps if you look on the bottom of page 18 about some of them are in charge of major zones and they distorted our line. And then if I can read from this and if you can confirm this is actually what Q. Sampon said in the interview and perhaps to start with that sentence. Some of them were in charge of major zones and they distorted our line, making some people in the areas they were in charge of unhappy and affecting the lives of innocent people. What did they do all these things for? They did these to isolate our democratic Kampuchean government from the people. Then it would be easy for them to stage a coup. This was an attack on us from the inside out. It was an attempt to attack us from the inside out. Nonetheless, we fought constantly against these attempts and defeated them. Until 1977, 1978, we managed to deal with these people completely and brought order back to the country. Thus, the people were very satisfied this is the truth. Now, can I deal with it this way? <coughs> is that an actual a accurate recording of what Q. Sampon told you in the interview? <coughs> Um, My friend finished the whole answer when reading this page 18. Also well, um, it's there. My learned friend can cross-examine upon it. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Heather, can you confirm that that was what Q. Sampon told you in the interview? Yes, I, I, I confirm the, the, the basic content, the, the content of the, of the, the document that you most referred to just now. Um, I think the, the, the passages in my publication are taken from the same interview and the differences are explained by the vagaries of translation different sensibilities uh, about how things should be translated, but the substance is, is, is not identical and virtually identical. Now, this interview with Q. Sampong, <coughs> um, the 4th of August 1980, again, similar question to yesterday with Ng Sari, um, how was this interview set up? How did you get access to Q. Sampong? Who was present at the interview? A little bit of background. And I apologise because I've gone against my golden rule of asking three questions in one, but you get the drift of the question. Um, this interview happened while I was at the Institute of, the Asian Institute of Tulo Longhorn University uh, in Bangkok. Um, the 
interview, the setting up of the interview was facilitated by the Thai academic who was then I think the head of the Institute of Institute and also with the help of um, journalist former colleagues of mine including the folks from Kyoto with whom I did the interviews that in one of the other documents that we uh, 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 I went in the company of another, uh, a number of journalists and trying to, I knew this question was coming. I've been trying to remember uh, who those journalists were. I think one of them was probably Gary Burns, um, who was a television journalist. There were a couple of others. At the moment, for the life of me, I can't remember exactly who. Um, we were picked up in Bangkok by a democratic Cambodia vehicle and taken to the Thai-Cambodian border um, and probably crossed in over to the Cambodian side. As it happens, this is the border between Cambodia and Thailand in the area of Pravidia, which we know is disputed. So I'm not not exactly sure what I was on. Uh, the format of the encounter was initially a kind of press conference. Uh, made a prepared statement to myself and the present. I had a separate interview with Kim Jong-un, which, which to my recollection was one-on-one. Journalists were not present. It was me and Kim Jong-un and the tape recorder. Um, we also spent the night in this location, myself and the journalist. Um, and then, if I recall correctly, we left the next morning and transported back to Bangkok in a democratic Cambodia vehicle. Uh, just what was the location? Are we in the middle of uh, the town? Are we on the outskirts? Are we in the jungle? Are we, where are we? And what was the setup? What I mean by that was, what was the, I don't know, who was with Q Sompon? Was it an entourage? Can you just describe the setting? Uh, yes, this was at the top or near the top of the Dong Rai escarpment, which forms the border, the disputed border between Cambodia and Thailand in that area. Um, Kyo Sopon was present. Uh, somebody by the name of Juan Mom uh, was present. Also present on that occasion was Son Sen. Uh, to whom I also spoke, not in a formal interview, but um, informally. Um, this was considered from the Democratic Cambodia side of things a bit of a treat because Son Sen had, according to what we were told and according to what Son Sen said to me, uh, just emerged from the interior of Cambodia. Uh, where he was said to have been leading the opposition to the Vietnamese presence. Uh, so this is the first time anyone had seen Son Sen, I think, in the foreign office, or I should say any Westerner, I suppose. Uh, I suppose Thai and Chinese have seen him. But any Westerner and Western journalist and academic have seen Son Sen since the fall of Thailand. So, my understanding of the subsequent interviews is that this was more or less the then location of the headquarters for the party central committee.
Now, I'd like you just to look at the first page of our file 3, tab 6, and the front of the document has duration 47 minutes, and then it even has a count of 00 to 60 minutes. And then can I take you to the final page of the, the, the document? So first of all, the front page, can you confirm it has 47 minutes? First of all. Uh, yes, that's what it says. And if you look at the final page, of E3 slash 203, we have end of tape 6. Now, how was this recorded? Uh, an, an ordinary cassette tape recorder of the, of the era. The kinds of cassettes that people used to play music off of in those days. Uh, I mean, was the, was the tape recorder on open show? I mean, were you hiding it? Was it, was it openly on view? No, this, this wasn't secretly recorded. This was only on view. I'd like to go to page 20 of E3, the, the document itself, E3 slash 203. Sorry, in fact, I think it will be easier. to go to the final page, which is page 21 for you. This is English ERN 00424016. Kamaya 00385414 and French 00432362. And I'm quoting your question. Question to Q Sampong. What I wanted to ask was, at the time, was about anyone who was accused of being either CIA agents or UN agents. I want to ask if any of them were accused of being UN agents in order to kill them in order to kill true patriots. Did that happen among the upper echelon? Answer. Yes, there was a comrade in West. He was an old man. He was accused by the Yuan agents. They were responsible for that. They accused him. However, there were they were not successful because we investigated the case in a timely manner. I want to pause there because on the face of it, this transcript shows end of tape 6. Is that correct on this page? Yes, now I want you to go back please, to the same file tab 1, which is the book. Pol Pot and Q Sampong. Yes, the Pol is a say on Pol Pot and Q Sampong. And to page number 29 in the English, referencing footnote 85 in the text beneath for my learning friend Mr. Coppe. English 00087793. French 00722090. And Khmer 00385413314. Now, if you look at the top of the page, Mr. Kim, 
Uh, Mr. Hedder, forgive me. It's late in the day. If you look at the, this is you in the book, and there's a direct, I think, translation or, or a direct extrapolation from the interview. There was a comrade in the West who's elderly now, who was accused by the Vietnamese agents, who were responsible, uh, responsible above him. With regard, however, to this problem, they were unable to keep unable to make their accusations stick because we kept track of things and examined them. It's the next part. Because you say here in the book, when the matter was pursued further, in other, in other words, when the comrade in the West was pursued further, so to quote, when the matter was pursued further, the following exchange occurred. Question. So what about people like Hu Yun? and Hu Nim, and all the others who were executed as a result of being accused of treason. Hu Yun and Hu Nim were friends of yours, and I guess you also knew many of the leading party cadre who were killed because they were accused of being CIA agents, or KGB agents, or Vietnamese agents. What about all those zone and sector secretaries, and deputy secretaries, and members, and all those brigade secretaries, and deputy secretaries and members? I find it very hard to believe that there were so many agents of imperialism and the Vietnamese within the party. I take it you believe they were all agents, that all of those who were executed at these levels were correctly accused and should have been killed. You don't think it's possible some of them were wrongly accused, that some of them were loyal communists and patriots and wrongly killed. As far as you know, there weren't any cases where somebody innocent was accused? Answer, no. Your question, not a single one? Answer, no, none. Your question, so everybody who was executed was in fact a traitor? Answer, yes, as far as I can grasp. Question, and no one was wrongly accused? Answer, as I said, there was one old man in the West who was accused of being a traitor, but was in fact loyal. Now, first question, sounds obvious, is that what's written in this paper, first of all? Yes. Now, when you were writing the paper and referencing the interview with Kiu Song Pong, what record were you relying on to quote verbatim questions and answers that I've just read out? Well, there are. Uh, I, I obviously see where this is going, what the problem is. Um, from the way it's written, it would seem to me that there must have been another tape, um, which has possibly been, been lost. Over the years. It's also possible that this was done after the tape ran out or over dinner or before the next morning, uh, and therefore it was among the tapes that were done during the formal interview. But that doesn't seem, from, from the way it's written, uh, it doesn't seem to have been, those are not the kinds of, that's not, the, not the kind of presentation of the data that would come from anything other than a tape. Uh, if the tape was lost, then the tape was lost. Are you satisfied that these questions and answers reflect questions that you asked in some part and answers that he gave you? Yes, I would say that. 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 Yes, I would say
yes, I have a pretty clear memory of this, this conversation uh, because of the kind of combative and confrontational emotional nature of it. it, it something that I, I, I remember. Well, set this in context. Six tapes of 47 minutes or thereabouts. Roughly 50 minutes times six. Roughly 300 minutes. You're towards the end of the interviews. I mean, can you try and recreate for us? Some, uh, How did it feel when you're sat opposite Kyu Son Pon asking these questions? How did you feel inside yourself when you were asking these questions about Hu Nim and Hu Yun? How did you feel? Well, I mean, I think it was more... I mean, I, 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 I knew that I had, in a, in a sense, ambushed the man. Um, I don't think he expected or was prepared for this line of questioning. Um, particularly because the line of questioning was fairly detailed um, and the knowledge I already had a point of the structuralization of the party. Um, um, so it was, it, as I said, it was, it, it was confrontational, it was emotional, I think, on, on both sides. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm conscious of the time. Can I explain that I have two more pages? which will constitute perhaps two or three questions, and I hope it would be convenient, please, if I can finish this today, but I am, of course, in the audience. I'm carrying on now with the book, our version D366.7.1.14, referencing around footnote 86, English ERN 0008794, command 0071114. And you state, or it's stated in the book, in response to years of questions like these, in other words, the questions we've just gone through, Q Songpong's office of the Vice President of Democratic Kampuchea for Foreign Affairs issued a document, now it says here, on the 15th of July 1978. Can I first ask you, is that a correct reference to the date of truth and justice, as it's called in its short form, should it in fact be 1987? It should be 1987 as it is in the footnote, footnote Thank you. I'm not going to deal with it in detail. You, you state a bit later on two or three sentences. The document conceded more deaths than Q. Song Pon had been willing to admit in 1980. These included deaths by starvation and executions of alleged traitors and of people who had been mistakenly killed when they were in fact not agents of the Vietnamese. However, the document still vastly underestimated the true death toll and attempted to shift almost all the responsibility for starvation and execution to alleged enemies. Now that document is on our case file as E3 slash 703. I don't propose to go through it, but in the footnote, uh, I want to deal with, well, yes, I'll, I'll read on if I may. 
uh, on the text. Q Sampon thus, in effect, simply reiterated his unrepentant support for and his association with Pol Pot and his failed policies. Uh, he also inadvertently shed more light on his own role in the conduct of criminal political murders. You go on to say Q Sampon's document begins by rehearsing the false claim that Pol Pot's policies succeeded in improving the life of the peasantry. It is asserted that once the Communist Party of Kampuchea took power, their life began to improve, for all of them had enough rice to eat and clothes. Moreover, their health was constantly improving since 1976, and the situation supposedly kept improving right through 1978. Now, in terms of that document at footnote 86, to give its uh, title, Office of the Vice President of Democratic Kampuchea in Charge of Foreign Affairs, what are the truth and justice about the accusations against Democratic Kampuchea of mass killings from 1975 to 1978, and then again, typescript document in the author's possession. So my question, Mr. Hedder, is how did this document get to be in your possession? Um, in this particular instance, my recollection is that it was given to me by a Cambodian-American by the name of Cam Sos, um, who I think by this time was a serving U.S. Uh, State Department official. Uh, if he wasn't by this time a serving U.S. State Department official, he was an employee of the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok working on the Thai Cambodian border. Just to confirm that we're talking about the same document, can you please go to your tab 7? That's our document E3-703. Can you confirm that this is the document that came into your possession? Um, this, I don't know whether the original document is in Khmer or English, but this is obviously in English, so can you just help us on that? Um, it's, the, it's the same document in the sense that it's the same content. I can't be sure that this document, which has your Chang's notation on it, is the one that was given to me, and then I gave it to him, and then he annotated it. But it's the same, same document, and it's the same content. Um, and the original was in English. Uh, this is not somebody's, somebody else's translation from the Khmer. This is their own translation, presumably, into English of something they wrote in they themselves in Khmer. Thank you, Mr. Hedda. Thank you, Mr. President, and your honours for allowing me a little additional time at this stage. Thank you, Mr. Hedda. ກິດຈຳນາການສັບນາການສໍາລັບថ្ងៃນີ້ດອລປີສໍາລັບໃຫ້ຫມາຍເຖິງປະກາດວ່າກິດຈຳນາການສັບນາການສໍາລັບថ
ให้มนตรีรัฐบาลตลาการรบมวยจมูกหนึ่งมนตรีในองค์กรเพียบกองเพียบสะใสหนึ่งในจุ่มเลี้ยงกองกายจุนลูกสตีวเฮดเดอร์ตลอดตะกันตีกระไรเด็กก็สนาเนวิ้งหนึ่งออยจึงก็ตลอดมากันกระไรตลอดตะกี้กัมเด็กขนมตุบสัมนาการนิวิ้งเนื้อพฤกษ์ไงจันตีดอกรามไข่กะกระดาดาวสับปะกร้อยเนื้อวิเลียมองประบุนพฤกษ์ประกอบออยันดูแลมันตีคงแข้งนองครุ่นจุนจบเจ้าตั้งปีรูปคือลูกนุ่นชี้หนึ่งลูกคือสมพรตลอดตะกันมันตีคงแข้งในโอเวอร์ทกอบเป็นเจ้าหนึ่งออยนองครุ่นประกอบตลอดจูรุ่มสัมนาการเว้นในปรึกษาจันตีดอกพรามไข่กะกระดาไอ้บานมุนมองประบุนปรึกได้ไล่ลูกนุ่นชี้ไอ้นองครุ่นกอดมันเลยตรมันตุบคุมครุ่นขังกรมสัตว์สัมนาการนี้ได้มีนิบย่อมหรืออบกอสตุสำหรับกอดอาจูรุ่มหนึ่งตามด้านการจำนาการสัมนาการพิจมไงสำหรับเจ้าสมเจริญกราวเชอ